Greetings, everyone. Today we are here with another episode of Unscripted Coding. Uh, last week, we were playing around with Pokwi AI's text to speech function. And we got it set up, we got the right models, we played around with it a little bit, and we got some really cool audio. So I'm going to play this really quickly. I'll mute myself. The most commonly used technologies in this step are convolutional networks associated with attention. Watch the Kikpa and the ADA for future development. Okay, so uh, I did some tests myself to see how they handle acronyms, so uh, that didn't make much sense. But overall, the, the text was pretty crisp, the voice was pretty good. Um, so, uh, that comes through command line. When we want to synthesize text, we open uh, a command prompt and we run one of these commands, TTS, text. Uh, I did just a little bit of digging afterwards and it doesn't seem like there's an easy way to, to add a lot of text to it, to run it off the command line. So, they have uh, this... Uh, command line feature, of course. They also have a demo server available for you to enter through a website. But again, it's very much limited to a sentence or two. That doesn't entirely surprise me uh, in hindsight, but ultimately I was hoping to take a long PDF, Word document, uh, EPUB file, just basically long pieces of text, whole books, and run it through this, um, this text-to-speech function. That has been dashed unless we write a bit of code ourselves. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to dig down and see what's actually happening um to in the background to understand what happens when you call that uh tts function what what gets run and whether we can hijack and and insert ourselves into that process okay so i'm gonna get started and see where we get to Thank you. 
Hey everyone, welcome back. I am just going to play a bit of audio, what we have uh, gotten out of this. Oh, yeah. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way in short. The period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received. For good or for evil, in the superlatives, Okay, uh, so I skipped the last little bit. I, I think you heard the gibberish at the very end. Um, what I'm realizing right now is that um, how you want to change the configuration, um, how you want to deal with the output, you probably don't want this long paragraph, it's not even a long paragraph, but this paragraph and having a whole chunk of text at once. What you need to do is split up your text into small chunks, into sentences along the way. Um, what I think is, is interesting is that they already split the text into sentences and and yet they're treating it as one whole file and yeah it, it's not very well done so for example when i change a decoder steps uh to say 500 it cuts off mid-sentence because there just isn't enough to go uh past you know uh 10 or 12 seconds worth of audio uh, when you hit to 8,000, it just wants to spend the rest of those steps. And that's why you're getting that gibberish at the end. It's it's just making some sort of noise for the sake of having noise. So uh, a couple of things. I made sure to save the config file. Um, what I want to say is next steps first, and then we'll go over what I actually did. Um, next steps, I think what I do and I've, I've already seen it, um, is, is there are files in this library to, to split the, the sentences up into, uh, you know, individual sentences. Um, what you want to do is split them up into sentences and then feed it into this TTS function one at a time. So, uh, one sentence at a time. And then you can see I, I quickly searched up how do you join wave files? And it looks like a uh, PyDub will just do it very quickly. So uh, you might have you know a thousand uh, different wave files, and then you join them all together into one, all the way through one one single audio clip. So what you want to do is individually tackle them and then join them together. I I'm realizing this might be by design. If you think about uh, Microsoft Edge, they seem to do it uh, one one sentence at a time. One, and then the next, and then the next, uh, as you read through a book. So they're feeding it uh, along the way. Okay, so what did I actually do to get this working? Uh, what I did was really just go into the open source files and try and understand what's happening. Now, not going to pretend I, I understand AI and the weights and all of that. They're, they've done a lot to train. But what I did was take a quick look at their server um, that that they used to create a website. Over here, you can create a website, uh, a demo server, and, and that will allow you to test it out. Uh, you can see a demo right here on on their page uh, you would type the sentence out and you could speak it out the idea here is 
that server must be interacting with the back end somehow. And what we found is uh, you import model manager, which is really important to figure out which model, which voco vocoder you want to use, and, and the synthesizer. The synthesizer is what actually uh, creates the audio. Uh, they have a bunch of argument parsers to figure out what you want to do, but I decided let's go with the default, let's hard code it in. And over here, they've defaulted a bunch of nuns. They use the model manager to get a model path, config path, model item. They're actually just taking the name that you put in. For example, for example, Tacotron over here and vocoder model high figin, and they are getting you the right the right pieces that attach to it. Once we understand that, you just use their synthesizer class, put in all of these various pads and files, and you have your synthesizer going. Finally, what you want to do is use their TTS function, which gets the last few parameters, including the text, uses the synthesizer, and, and spits out a file. So. You're going to see all of that. We have the right imports. You have this model manager and synthesizer. We can get rid of that. Um, these are the default pieces. Then over here, we specify HiFigin and Tacotron. Get the right, uh, get the right variables here. And finally, um, over here, I put in a custom config path because we did make some of these changes. I'm probably going to reduce the max encoder steps to something like 5,000. Um, and then we create the class. And finally, we use a TTS function. I have this long piece of text, no speaker, no style. Uh, and finally, you just run the synthesizer dot TTS, throw in those pieces. Finally, you have an output. That I struggled a bit with, but it turns out you don't even need the, the IO at all. And maybe I can take this out and simplify it. Uh, their save wave feature actually just allows you to put an output, uh, put uh, an output name and you're ready to go. So that makes it very, very easy to, to work with. Uh, this other piece, I am very curious now. Uh, I think I can get away with just doing none and get rid of this function as well. Let, let's see how that looks. Oh, did I? Uh, okay. I have to use backslash here. And the config file is this one. So let's get rid of this and change our max steps to 5,000. Uh, this might take a second. So let's, let's go through kind of the lessons I've learned. Uh, you want to take a look at their model's JSON file because that will tell you, I assume, what they found works best. I, I just took their DDC, Tacotron 2 DDC, but I did try earlier and was quite happy with Tacrochon DCA. And that goes with a different voco vocoder. Uh, what was interesting was mixing and matching them uh, did not lead to very good results. So uh, you want to stick with what, what they've done. If you want to experiment, so be it. And you might find something really good for your use case. But uh, they, they have chosen uh, these defaults for a reason. The other the other piece I struggled with is a lot of these can just be none. Um, but you're going to see that various steps are missed. So for example, I went with none for vocoder, checkpoint, and config. And you had the very classic robotic text-to-speech voice. It seems like this is what adds the emotion, the expression to, to your, your task. 
Okay, so uh, we tried it again. Let's let's hear the result. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the apache of belief. It, it was, was the, the apache of incredulity. It was the... Okay. Um, so, that whole style wave didn't really change much either, so we could take that out. Uh, you'll, you'll find, and it's, it's bothering me that they're calling epoch epot. And I think uh, Heaven, further down in this, was also called Heaven. So it's not perfect by any means. I, I would love to continue testing it. But what I find interesting is, is the time it actually takes a while. It took a minute to get a paragraph out. So while I thought early on it was incredibly stupid and foolish of me to just record Microsoft Edit, it's starting to feel less stupid to me. It, it still feels like I, I basically have to wait the time it takes to read through this text to, to get through it. So what I'm trying to say is this isn't the instantaneous change that I thought it was going to be. That it, it, it doesn't output a file instantaneously or quickly, so it might still take an hour or two just to push out a web page. That's not that's not really what I'm looking for. So um, I'm gonna keep going with this, but uh, hopefully this will show you guys how you can take um, somebody else's open source code. And, and try and figure out what's going on. It's really important to be able to do that and to build something of your own because they uh, seemingly, when I went through the issues, they have no interest in creating something that will read paragraphs or whole books to you. That is going to be something you have to build and customize yourself. And being able to just tack on and look at what their existing uh workflow is and and take advantage of that is is going to be a useful skill again next steps break these out into sentences feed it one at a time join all of the wave files together it's not perfect but i think that is that's fairly simple to do so uh hopefully you found that helpful uh hopefully you find this interesting as well because i I really like the results. Other than, you know, I, I nitpicked about a couple words, uh, the voice sounded really, really good. And I imagine the model will get better and better over time. Um, so hopefully you guys will be making audiobooks of your own. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. But if not, leave a comment below. Let me know how I can do better. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week.